you. What do you think? Why young people's involvement is important for green growth? Uh, that's a lovely question that you have asked that what is the importance of uh, youth in green growth. As we all know that if we look at the total population of the world and out of that we take out youth, it comes to about in an age group of say 14 to 35 or 14 to 30, it comes to almost 80%. So that means it is the biggest and the strongest workforce that we have with us. That is one. And second, that they are the people who are, whatever they are going to do now, they are going to enjoy the fruits of that in their coming years, maybe another 45 or 50 years. So that is why we want to inculcate youth into the mainstream along with us so that whatever experiences, whatever we have gained from our own experiences in the past 35, 40 years of our working, we can just hand them over that and they can begin their work from there on. That is one reason why I want youth. Second, they are more energetic, they are more technical savvy than what we were at their age. That is the second part. And they can definitely implement the newer technology changes into the working for a better and a safer environment for the society by making it more green. Thank you very much. And our second and last question is, what are the best ways to conserve water in house? Yes, now that is, that is going to change from society to society, a clan to clan and place to place. First thing is, how much of rainfall, average rainfall are we going to have wherever we are staying? And it depends on that, how you are going to save water. Very simple techniques, like conserving rainwater is one. Harvesting rainwater. I mentioned it yesterday in my lecture also, that what happens is that in new towns, in big towns, the new settlements are coming up. And the government is so serious in India about that, that unless you put a pipe which is 50 feet deep into the ground, in your lawn, in your backyard, on your driveway, anywhere, so that all the runaway water from your roofs, from the rain, everything can be sent back into the earth to where it belongs, so that over a period of time it can filter itself, reach the water table and serve the society. That is one. The second is that people who are living in places where you have very heavy rainfall, they can store their own water by many ways putting earthen pots outside, putting big leaves of big vegetables like, like uh -huh. they can, banana leaves and all those, they can just uh, use them to collect that water and that water can later on be boiled, cooled and used for human use. Another point I always wanted to make was that uh, there is fresh portable drinking water that is being used in toilets, which is a sheer wastage of normal drinking water. We are just going to flush the stool into the pipe with that fresh water. So we can have modalities of treatment where we can use, uh, we can make a top like a sink on the, uh, what you call the cistern which stores the water for the flush. And that simple water with, with which we brush our teeth or we wash our hands, that can be used to flush the toilet so that we can save the fresh drinking water for a better use. So these are the simple techniques that we can use. You can place anything, a box, a, a tin box, a tin metal tin utensil, a earthen pot outside, and then you can filter it with a muslin cloth and boil it and cool it and it can be used for drinking purposes. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you very thank you. much. For your I would time. like to thank, thank the foundation for give, giving us time to come here and talk to you and bring our basic ideas across and putting them across to all other people. Thank you. I would like to thank Ms. Varsha. I would thank, like to thank her staff, especially the young volunteers who are working here and making everything very comfortable for everybody. I wish you all the success and thank you once again and God bless you all.